Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. We welcome everyone joining us today from around the world for the first webinar in our Multiverse Wireless DMX webinar series. Today's webinar is an introduction to Multiverse. I'm Harrison Hanholt of City Theatrical, and I'll be your presenter today. Let's first take a look at our full webinar series to give you an idea of what you can learn over the next few weeks. Today's webinar is the first in a series of six webinars on Multiverse Wireless DMX. In it, we'll look at the breakthrough features of the Multiverse technology and how it's different than any other wireless DMX system in the world, why and how it was developed, why it represents the future of wireless DMX technology, and how it can change the way we do our lighting. Our second webinar on Thursday, May 14th, will be on our simple plug and play 2.4 gigahertz multiverse show baby, and we'll tell you how it's compatible with all previous show babies ever made, as well as with multiverse technology. On Thursday, May 21st, we will teach you about our multiverse node, which contains both 2.4 gigahertz and 900 megahertz radios, and, in a single, and is a single universe transceiver that can be used to create a single universe broadcast system, and which is our primary receiver on multiple universe systems. On Thursday, May 28th, we'll go deep into the multiverse transmitter, which contains four different radios and which can broadcast as many as 10 universes from one tra transmitter. In that webinar, we'll show you how to set up complex multiple universe broadcasts. On Thursday, June 4th, we'll show you how the Colorflex 5 by 2.5 amp 900 megahertz 2.4 gigahertz multiverse dimmer sets up and operates as well as teach you about an even smaller dimmer for props and costumes. Our newest Colorflex 2 by 2.5 amp 2.4 gigahertz multiverse dimmer. And last but not least, on Thursday, June 11th, we will show you our multiverse receiver card, which allows anyone, whether they are an electrician, prop builder, tinkerer, or inventor, to implement a tiny multiverse receiver into any DMX device. Along the way, we'll also talk about wireless DMX best practices, site surveys, optimizing your broadcast to get maximum fidelity without interference with radio systems in your venue, working with specialized antennas and other radio concepts which are not necessarily intuitive or obvious to the average user of wireless DMX. Those of you who watch all six webinars will come away with a good understanding of the advances in wireless DMX that Multiverse has made possible. If you happen to miss any of these webinars, don't worry. They will live on as a recording on the Multiverse pages on our website. Wireless DMX is a 20-year-old technology, and there are many users of it every day, from the top of professional lighting all the way to high schools and mobile DJs. This webinar series is aimed at users with a basic understanding of wireless DMX. If you are new to wireless DMX or want to reinforce your fundamentals, you can find lots of helpful information on the Downloads tab of all the Multiverse pages of our website including manuals, quick start guides, case studies, and white papers. You may want to start with our white papers, what you need to know about wireless DMX, and how advances in wireless DMX will change the way we do lighting. These two white papers will give you a good baseline understanding of wireless DMX technology. If you have any questions today, please type them into the Q&A box at the top of your screen. You may need to click the Q&A tab to open the Q&A box. Be sure to address your questions to all panelists, which enables me to see them. Now it is time for a swag giveaway. One listener will earn a City Theatrical t-shirt just for logging up to today's webinar. We'll reach into the fishbowl and pick out a name, and it is Tony Pinna. Congratulations, Tony. We'll contact you by email and make the arrangements to get you your shirt. Thanks for bearing with me through that introduction. Now let's get into the multiverse technology and how it was developed. City Theatrical envisions a future of wireless lighting control in which every DMX controlled lighting fixture contains a tiny, inexpensive multiverse module, leading to wireless control of systems containing hundreds of fixtures and dozens of universes and making lighting control easier for everyone. Multiverse marks our fifth generation of engineering development following WDS wireless data system, show DMX, show DMX Neo, and show DMX Neo with maximum bandwidth technology. Each of these technologies built on the shoulders of its predecessor. And from our work with technicians and lighting designers at the highest levels of professional lighting, we supplied the wireless DMX and RDM for hundreds of Broadway and West End shows, network television shows, 
major music tours, architectural installations, as well as many thousands of other users in motion pictures, events, houses of worship, and cruise ships. City Theatrical has been manufacturing wireless DMX longer than anyone and has 20 years of experience in professional wireless DMX. All previous wireless lighting systems, including ours, suffered from a basic flaw. They were limited in the scope to just a few universes of DMX data before their radio energy would overpower the spectrum and would prevent their signals, the signals of other radios in the venue, from accomplishing their mission. Additionally, the film and video industries have deeply embraced wireless technology, not just for lighting, but also for camera control, monitoring the video output around the set, and a variety of other critical uses. This has led to serious overcrowding of the 2.4 gigahertz spectrum and serious problems in this area. Faced with this challenge, our engineering team started with a clean sheet of paper and began to plan a new system of wireless lighting control that could be scaled up to unprecedented levels without overpowering the spectrum. In short, we needed to produce more data while using less radio energy. We realized that if we could do that, and if the technology could be small enough and inexpensive enough, we could create a future of lighting in which every fixture could be wireless, producing a revolutionary change in the way lighting is done. Once the basic radio system and firmware were developed, our team built these wireless LED panels to begin to test the system. Each of these panels contains 512 LEDs and requires a universe of wireless DMX for control. Here's our head of engineering, Paul Kleisler, in our factory with a mobile rig we created to be able to roll around the shop for testing. The LED panels give a perfect representation of the wireless data. Any lost packets, late packets, or other anomalies are immediately visible. These mobile rigs can be rolled around our shop to follow test, allow testing at a variety of distances up to 300 feet indoors. We also created other rigs for testing outdoors at longer distance. Here are three mobile rigs ready for testing, which enabled us to scale up to larger and larger multiple universe broadcasts. Remember, each individual panel can be an entire universe. We believe our testing represented pioneering efforts in the field of wireless DMX. Before multiverse, it simply was not possible to scale up broadcasts past just a few universes. Along with DMX, we also tested RDM in quantities that had never been approached by anyone. These were certainly exciting times in our shop as we were probing the limits of multiverse. Here's our software developer, Matteo Vigni, testing a multiple universe broadcast. Note the text on the panels, world change in progress. This was the motto of our engineering team during the development of multiverse. Many new breakthrough technologies needed to be invented to overcome the drawbacks that had impeded all previous wireless DMX systems. Today's webinar will take a look at the underlying technology which enables these breakthrough performance, along with the many features built into multiverse that can make lighting control easier for everyone. Those features include new radios that can transmit five times more data than ever before while producing 80% less radio energy per universe than a typical single universe transmitter. The ability to transmit in either the 2.4 gigahertz or 900 megahertz bands, or in both simultaneously. A technology we call Multiverse DMX or MDMX. It's an encapsulation of the DMX 512 standard for wireless transmission that produces an additional dramatic reduction in radio energy used. A technology we call Multiverse RDM or MRDM, which is an encapsulation of the RDM ANSI E1.20-2010 standard for wireless transmission that improves wireless RDM performance. Forward error correction to detect and repair missing data. Show key security to prevent interference from other multiverse systems in the area. Smartphone and tablet lighting control built into multiverse transmitters. Everyone today wants to be able to control lighting from their smartphone without having to use a lighting console. Lock pin, it locks unauthorized users out of the system helping to protect your lighting system from accidental or malicious attacks. Backwards compatibility with Show DMX Neo wireless DMX products. It operates multiverse in Neo mode. RDM integration of entities, our radio and fixture appear as one device when multiverse modules installed in lighting fixtures. And finally, multiverse is based on a low cost technology. Let's take a deeper look into each of these breakthrough technologies. New radios that can transmit five times more data than ever before 
while producing 80% less radio energy per universe than a typical single universe transmitter. With conventional wireless systems, DMX instructions are coded and separated into data packets of varying capacity. The data packets are attached to carrier waves. In a conventional wireless DMX system, 512 DMX slots is the maximum amount of data, which can be attached and broadcast. Multiverse data packets can contain up to five times more data. With Multiverse, 2,560 DMX slots, which is a full five universes, can be attached to the same carrier wave and transmitted. The Multiverse radio's ability to broadcast much more data while using much less radio energy is only the first step in building larger, more reliable DMX and RDM systems. The second is the ability to transmit in either the 2.4 gigahertz or 900 megahertz band, or in both simultaneously. While most wireless DMX systems operate in the 2.4 gigahertz radio spectrum, multiverse systems are capable of also operating in the 900 megahertz ISM band, which is licensed for use in North America only. Users can broadcast on both frequencies separately or simultaneously, depending on the multiverse product, and can configure their systems for optimal performance. The 2.4 gigahertz band has always been an area of choice for wireless DMX due to its ability to carry relatively larger amounts of data, but 900 megahertz has now become a good choice also. Here is a comparison between the two bands. For 2.4, the strength star is available nearly everywhere around the world, passes through objects well, has a good broadcast distance, and multiverse can carry five universes of data. The weaknesses are it is in a crowded band. For 900 megahertz, the strength star is in a less crowded band than 2.4 gigahertz. It passes through objects better than 2.4 gigahertz. It broadcasts further than 2.4 gigahertz, and multiverse can carry four universes of data. The one weakness is it is only available in North America. There are some US theme parks that do not allow wireless DMX broadcast in the 2.4 gigahertz band to ensure that there is no possible conflict with cash transaction devices operating on 2.4 gigahertz. 900 megahertz is a good option to overcome that restriction. Other users choose to split their broadcast over both bands to spread their radio energy over a wider area. Outside of North America, multiverse users must broadcast only in the 2.4 gigahertz band. The third is MDMX or multiverse DMX. It is an encapsulation of the DMX 512 standard for wireless transmission that produces an additional dramatic reduction in radio energy used. MDMX is the heart of multiverse's ability to reduce radio energy used, far beyond the 80% baseline reduction achieved with the multiverse radios. The DMX 512 ANSI standard specifies data redundancy, requiring data to be sent as many as 44 times per second, whether a DMX slot is moving or not. Picture an extreme example of someone giving an hour speech at a podium with some lighting directed toward him or her. The lights are brought up to full in five seconds, stay there for an hour, and are brought back down to zero in five seconds. Let's do the math. 60 seconds times 60 minutes is 3,600 seconds times 44 DMX packets per second, and that equals 158,400 DMX packets in an hour. During that hour, the lights actually change for a total of 10 seconds, five seconds up, five seconds down, and we're static for the remainder of the time. 10 seconds out of 3,600 seconds is 0.28%. And therefore, the lights were static for 99.72% of the time, but receiving commands constantly. In a wired system where bandwidth is not a concern, this is not a problem. We think nothing of it. But in a wireless system, the penalty is severe since we are sending radio energy into the spectrum that serves no purpose, and in fact causes interference with all other systems in our area of the spectrum. City Theatrical's research into cue movements on large musical productions showed that on a the largest and busiest shows, the majority of DMX slots are static in any queue, and many DMX slots, such as unused parameters on moving lights, never move the entire show. Since the link from transmitter to receiver is proprietary in a multiverse system, there are no other lighting fixture or devices affected by it, we realized that it was not mandatory to follow the DMX 512 ANSI standard, and we created an encapsulation of the standard, optimized for wireless use, and called it MDMX. This is a true technological breakthrough that changes everything in wireless DMX. MDMX uses its radio energy extremely wisely, conservatively sending all of the data needed, 
refreshing it regularly, and always retaining the ability to transmit entire universes with every slot moving. This allows larger and larger systems to be scaled up with careful stewardship of radio energy created and with no reduction in performance of the lighting system. The fourth is MRDM or Multiverse RDM. It is an encapsulation of the RDM ANSI E1.20-2010 standard for wireless transmission that improves wireless RDM performance. DMX is a unidirectional protocol with data flowing only from the lighting controller to the end device. RDM, or Remote Device Management, is an enhancement to DMX, which allows users to communicate bidirectionally with their lighting gear. That means lighting users can utilize RDM to change a DMX address or the personality of a lighting fixture without climbing a ladder and can get status data such as fixture hours or circuit board temperatures remotely. The RDM ANSI standard requires DMX to briefly stop broadcasting when RDM is being used. Since in a wired system, DMX and RDM share the same pair of wires, this degrades DMX performance. And for that reason, many lighting users have avoided using RDM and RDM has never achieved its full potential as a technology. Multiverse's MRDM radio technology allows RDM to report back without disrupting DMX or interfering with DMX at all. And this feature is unique to wireless MRDM. Better RDM performance opens new worlds of easier setup and troubleshooting for wireless lighting users. City Theatrical was the innovator of wireless RDM technology and holds the US patent for the technology. The fifth is forward error correction to detect and repair missing data. Data can be corrupted during transmission, especially in an overcrowded radio environment. Forward error correction detects and corrects errors in transmitted data. This helps to maintain data fidelity when mission critical data is imperative. The sixth is show, show, show key security to prevent interference from other multiverse systems in the area. Multiverse wireless DMX systems employ show IDs, which are unique combinations of broadcast parameters such as radio frequency, data rate, band location, and hopping pattern to ensure optimal performance and fidelity within the environment in which they are operating. When setting up a multiverse system, all components, transmitter and receivers, are set to the same show ID. If two separate multiverse systems with identical show IDs are in use in close proximity, such as adjacent theaters or studios, there is a chance that one system could inadvertently control the other. To eliminate this possibility, a three-digit show key may be added to lock down the system from any outside control. The seventh is smartphone control of lighting. Smartphone control of lighting for setup and troubleshooting removes the need to have a skilled lighting programmer on hand at all times. All models of multiverse transmitter include both Bluetooth and Wi-Fi radio receivers for input control. Through the use of City Theatrical's free DMX Cat smartphone app, users can set up and configure the wireless system as well as control any lighting fixture that is part of the multiverse setup. Whether it is a fixture with a built-in multiverse module, a fixture receiving its data from a multiverse node, or any connected wired fixture downstream of those devices. For tablet users, Wi-Fi lighting controllers like Luminaire are supported as well. Number eight is the lock pin. It locks unauthorized users out of the system. Since multiverse systems can be modified and or controlled using the DMX CAD app, for added security, lock pins, which are four digit codes, can be assigned to each transmitter that locks out all DMX CAT users to prevent unauthorized or malicious use. When using Wi Fi controllers to control multiverse transmitters, a Wi Fi password can be utilized for the same purpose. The ninth is backward compatibility with Show DMX Neo wireless DMX products. Many, but not all, multiverse products are compatible with City Theatrical's Show DMX Neo products when set to a Show DMX Neo show ID. Multiverse show babies, multiverse nodes, ColorFlex multiverse dimmers, and multiverse 2.4 gigahertz radio modules are fully compatible with City Theatrical's legacy Show DMX products and may be used to expand these systems' capabilities. The tenth is RDM integration of entities. Radio and fixture as, appear as one device when multiverse module is installed in lighting fixtures. When the multiverse modules are implemented into a lighting fixture, they become an integrated part of the device. Lighting users simply look for the fixture they want to communicate with, not the radio module in addition to the fixture. 
This simplifies the setup process, particularly on large shows. Number 11 and the final is it is a low cost technology. The multiverse modules used in every multiverse product are the lowest cost full featured DMX and RDM devices ever introduced. They are perfect for direct integration into all types of lighting fixtures. So we ask how multiverse will affect the future of lighting. Multiverse for the first time allows lighting users to scale up larger systems of hundreds of fixtures and dozens of universes, leading to a future of wireless lighting control. As more and more manufacturers implement the multiverse module into their fixtures, lighting systems will include multiverse compatible consoles, lighting fixtures, gateways, fog machines, dimmers, and any other imaginable DMX device. We live in a wireless world. Sometimes we plug in our laptops and sometimes we run them wirelessly. And the future of lighting control will be similar. Our lighting fixtures will have the capability to be run wired or wirelessly and lighting users will make the choice depending on their needs, lowering costs, saving time, and adding flexibility to lighting setups. That's about the end for today, but there is much more we can help you learn, and I hope you can join us for our upcoming webinars. In these upcoming webinars, we will go deeper into the setup and use of Multiverse and how your wireless DMX broadcast can be set up to achieve the highest possible fidelity while having the least effect on any other radio users around. Contact the City Theatrical offices in the US or UK, visit our website, citytheatrical.com, or our Facebook page, where we are always posting information on new products, or any of the great City Theatrical distributors around the world for more information on City Theatrical's products. We have some time for some questions. Um, so let's take a look here. What do we have? Uh, okay. What is the range that you can transmit? So the range varies depending on the device, the settings, and also the antenna that's being used. But a good rule of thumb is 100 meters indoors and 500 meters outdoors, or 300 feet indoors and 1,500 feet outdoors. There's another question. Okay, how many receivers can I transmit from one transmitter? Uh, there's no limit to the number of receivers that you can transmit to in a multiverse system. Okay. Let's see. Okay. What is a show ID? Some other systems require pushing a button on the transmitter or receiver to link them. We do it by setting a number, which we call a show ID. Uh, they must match between the transmitter and receiver and it, uh, it, what it does is it chooses the spectrum in which uh, you want to broadcast in, as well as a unique frequency hopping pattern. Uh, we like this system because it gives us more control over the setup of the broadcast, and it's pretty easy to put your signal exactly where you want it. We're going to get deeper into them when we talk about the uh, individual devices. Okay. What else do we have here? How many fixtures can you connect to a receiver? Uh, the receivers follow uh, the same specification of the DMX standard of uh, 32 devices in a single run. Um, let's see. Will you ever make a radio other than 2.4 gigahertz for Europe? Uh, currently, there are no plans for this. Uh, that might change if the laws pertaining to the radio spectrum in Europe changes. Uh, but right now, no. Um, let's see. That's about all we have time for on the questions. If we didn't get to your questions, we will reach out to you via email and uh, answer them, and then we can talk a little bit more about them. So I'd like to uh, thank everyone for joining us today. And uh, this webinar and all webinars are going to be posted on our website.